listening to I Feel For You. I'm Dion, a creative coach, yoga teacher, writer, DJ, human being. And in today's episode, we're talking about the importance of being vulnerable, showing up and coming out of the cave. Oh, and Prince, obviously. I'll be sharing my journey and struggles with finding a way to safely express myself and some tools and techniques that I've used to come out of the cave, to reconnect when I'm feeling a bit disconnected and mute and when I'm facing resistance and contraction. So this show is for you if you are wanting to step forward, to move forward, to find flow, especially if you've been hiding away for a little bit. I hope you enjoy it. So this is scary. In my mind, I imagined a kind of intro to Aaliyah's Age Ain't Nothing But A Number record where her breathing sounded emotional. Now I'm thinking about Whitney Houston, so emotional. I'm sitting in my room, Brandy. Okay, that's enough 90s R&B references. It's a Monday evening and I'm sitting in my room, my bedroom. There's a lot of traffic outside and I'm trying not to overthink things and instead just practice showing up. No plans, no prep, just being present. There's a strange rippling sound because I'm sitting on a exercise ball is that what they're called I don't know but you know the things that look like beach balls and yeah I'm sitting on one of those and actually it's quite comforting there is something in rocking around isn't there good for the soul and I'm sitting on this ball in front of a camera stand with a mic tentatively placed on top of it and it's starting to get dark outside because the sun has just gone down the clocks went forward at the weekend and things seem a bit disorientated I think in general people are a little bit more tired because they had an hour less of sleep but then there's that excitement for spring and everything that's coming with that more light, more energy, more outwardness and here I am sitting in my room, rocking on this strange ball, wondering what the hell I'm going to talk to you about today. And I'm setting myself this challenge because I've been mute again. It's that thing that happens every now and again when I start crawling into the cave of fear. And that cave is claustrophobic And it's a place I don't really want to hang out, but it's so familiar and comforting. And I like to think of myself as wearing this very regal cape, (laughs) like that guy who works at American Vogue. I can't remember his name, but you know who I mean, because I used his gif on my blog the other day. (laughs) So if you're unsure, check him out. I forgot his name. I feel bad. But, you know, you get the gist. I imagine, like, wearing a cape. And it's kind of like this protective layer, protection from the scary stuff. What is the scary stuff? Showing up, I think. It's not the showing up, it's the expectation beyond that. And I think at this point in my life, I'm realising the patterns of the fear that creeps up inside me like eels in the mighty bush. No, I don't want to think about that, that's a horrible thought. Feels up inside ya, find it an entrance where they can. Feels up inside ya, find it an entrance where they can. Bore through your mind, through your tummy, through your anus. Eels. 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 Eels.
that closes in and renders me mute and I've written about this a little in the past. Some of you who get my digest will know. This feeling that's like a pressure in my throat. And I think a lot of writers get it. I think a lot of people get it. I think it's very normal. What is normal? I don't know, but I think it's common, I guess. I know I'm not alone in the muteness and the fear of speaking up. Because there's a lot of things that I feel fearless about speaking up about. In fact, I feel like it's a responsibility for me to use my voice on certain things. Situations of injustice, for example. I choose to speak up, even though I know there's a lot of people who don't like that. But I don't see that I have a choice to just sit quietly and not speak up when I see injustice. But other times, it's harder. And I'm still trying to figure out why. I think I know why. Because for most of my life, I found it really hard to express myself, or rather, I found it really hard to express myself publicly, privately. I feel very comfortable being alone and finding outlets to express. And a lot of you know writing is one of those things. I find writing is a great way to get unstuck and find flow. Movement is a big one. Also helps to dislodge the stickiness and to express feelings emotions and to tune into sensation to release tension and that might be through yoga I mean you know my feelings about even the word yoga the last eight years or so has been a strange one for me I'm still working on that but for now yeah yoga movement rolling around on the floor movement also in the form of dance gyration, bathroom discos. Sometimes it's wearing a costume. And I spoke about this in a podcast that I don't know if I'm going to share or not, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll put the audio somewhere. But this idea that putting on a costume sometimes helps to shift a state of stuckness or muteness or fear and allows me to feel that I can express myself and I know there's a lot of other people that use this tool. Other forms of expression, making mood boards, I dig it. Call them vision boards if you like, I don't care, but (laughs) mood boards in real life with glitter and a lot of weird smelling glue. I know that maybe I should edit that out, but like, okay, just like, you know, glue and scissors and pens and getting physical with craft and sometimes it's online vision boards some of you probably see that in my instagram stories so expression privately is something that is so very necessary for all of us i think to do and to find the most comfortable outlets for us to do it's just the public thing i think and I don't know if many people know this, my closest friends will know this, but I'm a massive introvert and I'm really shy. So the idea that so much of my work calls for me to stand up in front of massive crowds of people often is bizarre and weird and unexpected. But it makes sense in ways because I'm really lucky that the work that I do is also an outlet of expression. Like, I don't know if you know, but I do a few different things with my time in life. I teach yoga slash movement slash rolling around on the floor things and meditation slash mindfulness slash whatever you want to label it as for a long time. For many years, I was 
holding community classes and I'm taking a break from that and my focus is mainly on workshops and retreats and I'm also a DJ which means I travel to different countries and I play music which is you know great but sometimes I have to be on a stage which I don't like which which <laughs> which I don't love and I know it's not about me standing up there but sometimes it has been and it's been pretty scary actually some real dodgy situations and yeah anyway the point is yeah standing up in front of people I'm my work calls for it in many ways and also I choose to speak on certain things so as a writer I blog and have numerous different blogs and I've been blogging since I don't know like 2004 something like that I don't know my work's been published on different platforms some of them great others terrifying like in Norway there is a online news site that everybody reads and one of my pieces went up there and it was talking about my own experience in Norway of experiencing some dodgy stuff racism and still to this day it's haunted me the amount of trolls and hate speech that I received because of using my voice to speak up so other parts of my work in coaching are a lot more intimate but still demand a kind of expression of sorts in order to hold space for someone else but the thing is with my work and all the different things that I'm doing the expression part feels very natural because it's not about me do you know what I mean it's about other people like if I'm standing in front of a room full of people and to be honest many of you that have ever been to an event know that I'm not really a fan of standing at the front of a class like army style leading people through you know instructions I find that quite boring so you know what I mean like roaming around the room or whatever or holding space as a teacher I'm more interested in the conversation people being able to connect to an idea and to reinterpret it for themselves I guess that's the same with music like I hope that people connect to something that I play and then express themselves through movement that feels authentic I don't know I don't know I know it doesn't really make sense to a lot of people that I do these things that are seemingly so different but to me they're kind of all the same it's kind of about hopefully offering space to people for them to empower themselves to find release slash connection slash space So all of that waffle was to talk about expression in my work and how it feels very easy to do because it's, what am I trying to say? Expression in my work when I'm needing to deliver, be it a workshop, be it a gig, it just feels very natural. And somehow with this podcast, I've become a bit mute there's a blockage and I found it difficult to put something out there and it's not through want of trying as I keep recording and editing and then just not feeling eureka or rather just finding myself on this quest in my cape to find that dark cave and it's really confusing because I know I want to do this but I'm not really sure how so I'm kind of tricking myself into doing it by just showing up expression publicly has always felt challenging and I know a lot of that is rooted in not feeling safe to express myself and I know that that was kind of confirmed when I wrote this article that was picked up by the Norwegian press and went viral, if you like, and, you know, hate ensued. But um, 
yeah, it just has, has not felt safe to express myself, my fullest self, for a very long time. And yet I know that when I'm working with clients or if I'm connecting with someone after a workshop or before a workshop or whatever, and there's the space to express and connect, I know that there is real value in just offering yourself up on a platter, you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if any of this is making sense. I guess I just wanted to acknowledge the fear in turning up here and sharing myself, but I can also see how it might be useful for someone, I don't really know how, but it may be, it's going to be useful for someone to hear that it is very human and that cave, however glamorous your cape may be, can feel like a very real place and it can feel like a place that is very difficult to come out of once you're comfortable in there, in your bejeweled cape and I suppose I'm asking the question, how do we get unstuck from that feeling of being trapped and scared, not expressing ourselves, not moving forwards, not taking an opportunity, not showing up, not being present, I guess. And I realise that phrase is really overused, but Maybe you have another way of saying that. And I think it's worth saying that sometimes the cave is useful. The cave can feel like a place to rest the soul in the difficult moments when maybe there are wounds that need attention or there's a kind of aching vulnerability that needs to be protected. And I feel in this day and age, especially in relation to women, and especially in relation to women of colour, black women, I feel that vulnerability, pain, can be used in a way as like this sinister kind of like fuel for people, like almost like there's a perverse pleasure for some people in observing your pain, seeing your suffering. So I think it's very real and very okay for the cave to be used as like a, a cocoon of protection. But there comes a point where the need to be open and by open I mean vulnerable I suppose just like the advice on queer eye suggests and Brené Brown and heaps more people before her it's necessary for us to feel and to be open to what is to maybe take a leap to maybe put ourselves out there when we're not certain not a hundred percent certain and of course, all of this stuff is relative, right? And if you've listened to the first podcast, just do the damn thing already, you probably have a sense of what I'm talking about here. Like, sometimes there's an aching. And we know it because we can usually locate it, like, in the body. Like, it's often in the guts, this sort of yearning. And maybe it's a, a dream that we have. Maybe it's a feeling that we want to experience. Maybe it's a connection. Maybe it's a cape. <laughs> I don't know. But there comes a point where we want to touch that. We want to be able to, to tap into it. And we can't do that when we're hiding in the cave because when we're hiding in the cave it's kind of 
yeah, it's protective, but it's kind of a cocoon away from everything, which is not where I want to be right now. You can't selectively numb feelings. So if you try to numb the vulnerability, you also numb joy, happiness, connection. Like you can't have connection and joy and happiness without vulnerability. Right, right, right. So I thought I'd share a couple of things that help me. And I'm going to think about today because it's now 8.26 p.m. and it's taken me all day to get to this point. So <laughs> maybe it's useful to reflect on those things. Not to say that these things will work for everybody, but perhaps there's something. I don't know. So I suppose when speaking about the dark cave, the obvious analogy is thinking of what the opposite to that might be. So light and space, openness. And I'm thinking in terms of environment here. So getting outside can be really helpful. And I took myself out today and I took myself to commune with Auntie, which is the sea. And <laughs> I spent some time, luckily, you know, it's brightened, so the sun tends to shine a lot. Maybe I'm gonna curse that, but <laughs> the sun was shining, that helps, obviously. And getting some fresh air, talking to some trees, meeting some animals, you know what I mean? Just connecting with a different environment can be helpful to get you out of the cave, to get things a little bit more unstuck. I was really tempted to take a bike and ride under the cliffs, but I was going to say there wasn't time, but that's a lie because I could have made time to do that and I kind of wish that I did because I know that would have been magnificent because it's like a film set, the undercliffs near Rotting Dean, which is like one of my favourite places ever. So yeah, in hindsight, I probably would have added something like that, creating the time to do something in an environment that's quite different to where you're at, just to really shift your state physically. What else helped me get out of the cave today? Good food. I mean, you know, I love my food and I'm not about what's healthy, what's not, because I think it's all relative and it's all about what food helps you feel most fabulous most dazzling and <laughs> most vivacious I suppose. So food is a big one. I ate some great food today and I think regular meals is also a good one to get you out the cave. Keep things moving. What else helped me get out the cave today? I forced myself to try to connect with friends on WhatsApp and my friends will tell you I'm the worst at WhatsApp. I just, you know, I delete it off my phone. I go sometimes months without using it. And then, I, you know, I just sort of, yeah, I get a bit overwhelmed with it all, especially group chats. I'm not massive on group chats, you know. I'm a one-to-one -one kind of person, preferentially. But, um, <laughs> you know, because otherwise I'll just be on there all day sending memes and so on. But anyway, yeah, going on WhatsApp and not going with a view to try and hear something back but just rather to put my energy into showing up for someone else and checking in with them that was helpful and I think that's also useful thinking about other people and how you can support them if you feel that you're in a place to do so and I, and I did feel in a place even though I was in the cave wearing my cape music is a massive one for me and there is one particular song that I will play in any situation to be honest but especially if I need a little pep up it's like a Barocca song can I say that it's not sponsored because I don't drink that stuff anymore but um yeah it's like a little espresso shot and it's obviously by Prince and it's I would die for you the 12 inch extended version play that song and tell me that you don't feel better after listening to it listening slash I was going to say shimmying, but I feel a bit weird about that word. So um, some kind of, you know, interpretive movement because it's amazing. And if you want an extra treat, find it on YouTube in any version. But, you know, obviously 
like it's from Purple Rain, the film. So that snippet in the film, particularly towards the last section of the song, you'll know the part that I'm talking about when you see it. Definitely recommended for feel good, literally. I'm going to stop going down that rabbit hole because it might begin to get inappropriate up in here. So I'm going to just draw it back and share the last thing that I did today that helped get me out of my cave. Still wearing the cape though, because it's fabulous. But the thing that helped was books. There's a number of inspirational books that I have lying around and there's a number of writers that I always turn to for that sort of support. Maya Angelou is definitely one of those people for me. Eartha Kitt is one of those people for me too. At the moment I'm reading a book by Rosa Guy. She does a lot of like, or did a lot of teen fiction. And a lot of it is about the experience of people who are of the diaspora, the African diaspora. So um, like a lot of the stories have some kind of Caribbean family living in New York and there's a lot of like cultural challenges. The book I'm reading is called The Friends, so it's about one of the teenagers is getting severely bullied. Actually it's quite traumatic to be honest because it's quite close to my <laughs> my own story. That's a whole nother podcast but anyway yeah that's what I'm reading at the moment. So finding and connecting with those writers Edward Dandicat is another one for me, Danzi Senna, so many. If you're part of the other book club, you'll know some of these. If you're not, head to my blog and keep an eye out on stories because I'm sharing books on there that I recommend. So finding books that help you feel uplifted and that inspire you and it helps if you can just kind of dip in as well, just to kind of get a bit of tonic. You know what I mean? But all of this said, these are things that I use today. Oh yeah, there was one more thing I did and that was, I had a movement practice and it goes without saying for me, the movement and breath are like one. And yeah, I started with a long meditation with a real focus on breathing, just simply breathing. And to be honest with you, I think that is for me the most transformational thing and prints but you know it's kind of the same isn't it prints is a meditation but here I go again down a different rabbit hole but yeah if you're looking for something to do right now just sit stand walk drive whatever you're doing if it's a safe situation to close your eyes in you can do that you can keep your eyes open whatever works for you but just take a few rounds of breath just bathe in your breath for a little while like maybe it's just five really full really deep breaths and you know don't restrict yourself in any way to having to breathe in a particular form I mean if it's feeling good just to take the breath through your mouth obviously do that if that's making you feel a bit too anxious and up in the head and just breathe through your nose like whatever's working whatever's feeling accessible for you right now do that you know I'm not just talking about breathing either obviously because you know do the things that are accessible for you in every way right now so if it's feeling comfortable to creep out of the cave right now then come on out if you want to stay in there a while and you want to pull up some duvets and have a nap then do that but breathing breathing really I feel is key transformational shape shifter but also as well as shape-shifting, I feel what's so potent about the breath is I feel like it's it's like this punctuation that offers you this other window to really see what's happening. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not asking you to do anything. Like, if you're just breathing without any kind of form, like any kind of style, you're just breathing and noticing how you're breathing, I feel it's such a valuable way to really tune in to what's going on because it's so revealing. And then as time goes on, maybe you feel like you wanna stretch out the breath. Maybe it feels good to take bigger breaths, longer, slower, I don't know, like whatever's calling you, because you know, because you're your own best teacher. But just spending some time just 
drenching yourself in this glorious nourishment which is like you know the most space making transformational amazingness i think which you can do in the cave out the cave whatever <laughs> supporting yourself with your breath is an act of compassion it's like it's self care it's witnessing yourself which isn't easy it doesn't come easy to a lot of people and it can be really uncomfortable if you're struggling or you're feeling a bit stuck but at the same time it can offer you it can offer you this opportunity to see where you're at but also create change so yeah my practice was a lot of breathing I was sitting in my meditation and I laid down for a bit and I sat up again and you know you can you can meditate however the hell you like you know this if you know me you know this um <laughs> so just do what you feel babes um, make sure you're comfortable and then I just added some gentle movements and that was like just moving my shoulders letting my head move around so I'm just trying to open up that area around my throat around my chest which gets really tight in those moments of being in the cave it's because I'm hunched over in the cave and I'm kind of feeling protective and closed in my posture is kind of rounded it's like really introverted and that's not a bad thing it's like a very normal thing it's like it's what babies do it's like you know it's what animals do it's like it's very natural it's very normal but to do it when that's the only thing we're doing and we're not experiencing the full spectrum of moving the way we feel we want to move and expressing ourselves then maybe it's not so helpful so yeah just adding some spinal movement and then just letting my practice be intuitive and you know I think a lot of people can get stuck around the yoga thing as well and have an idea about how it should look and postures and like alignment and all this stuff and you know if that's your bag go for it a lot of you know I'm not really interested in that stuff I'm more interested in sensation and how we can hold space for ourselves and how we can create more space for ourselves and how we can talk to ourselves nicely along the way and for me that is the practice and just spending some time doing that was really helpful for me today it might be a complete turn off for you and that's okay and I would just recommend you find the stuff that just helps you feel the way I feel about Prince I'm sorry I brought him up again <laughs> I'm sorry um, I'm just still not over it anyway um, yeah those are the things that help me obviously writing as well and all those kind of daily rituals that I have and soon I'm going to do you a spring one I know a couple of people have asked for that so soon I'm going to put that together for you but yeah I guess I just wanted to sit down with you and have a frank and honest but have a frank and sorry have a frank there's a lot of eastenders references in these podcasts i don't know why because i haven't seen it in years but anyway a frank <laughs> chat with you about the difficult stuff because that's why i wanted to use this space not just to talk about the difficult stuff but rather not to shy away from it so if you're going through any kind of blockages or you're struggling with fear taking its toll or fear trying to hold you back or that you're finding it hard with anything right now I really hope that you can be reminded that it's okay to feel your feelings it's okay to experience emotion of course not all feelings and emotions are pleasant and I'm not suggesting any kind of uh sado act of like dwelling in the bad stuff or doing things that make you feel bad of course not but I guess what I'm saying is if you are experiencing some stuff that feels challenging and heavy 
then I hope you're reassured that feelings and emotions are not static. They're constantly shifting and changing just as we are. I like to use the breath as an analogy here that it's something that is constant and it's moving and no two breaths are the same and it's the same with our lived experience because you know we are made up of so many things the breath the body the experience inner experience outer experience the environment the ether and so on we're not our brains we're not our bodies we're not our environments but there's definitely things at play that make them a part of us am i going too off the rails here you know what i'm talking about right what I'm saying is you're not stuck. It's okay to be in your feelings and it's okay to dwell in the cave. Do the stuff that you need to do to take care of yourself to feel better. If it means sacking it off and just getting into bed and just having a self-care day or whatever, then do that. That's not accessible for everyone. It totally isn't. So if you need to reach out to get some support, to get some help, if you need to make that doctor's appointment, if you need to go and fix your meds, if you need to take yourself out on a walk to go and meet a friend, if you need to reach out and connect with someone to ask for help, if you'd rather have some time just to spend by yourself so that you can treat yourself nicely and feel better, then do that. Explore the things that work for you. You are never stuck. And I really hope that you feel better soon. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I will, of course, update the show notes. This is episode seven. So if you head to dion.space forward slash podcast or I feel for you podcast.com episode seven, you will find all of the show notes there. And for those of you interested in working with me in one of my one-to-one coaching programs, I'm fully booked until May, but I'll have a couple of slots opening up. So if you're interested, head to my site, dion.space and get in touch with me. And for those of you interested in coming to one of my events, I'll be back in Norway in April, running some workshops, which are almost sold out, which is incredible and crazy. I think at the moment there's two slots available in Bergen on the west coast and I'm not sure about Oslo I've been told that places are going fast so head to space is the place dot yoga for all of my yoga workshop retreat related events you can get all of the info there I'll also put the details in the show notes for you Also, if you're interested in receiving more pep talks and feel good things, and memes obviously you might be interested in receiving my digest yeah it's like a weekly mail a kind of fun pack if you like that i sent out to folks on the list to get on the list head to dion.space forward slash digest And you'll also find my blog over there where I'm updating with ridiculous and wonderful things, (laughs) sharing inspiration and stuff related to self-care. You can find my blog at dion.space forward slash blog, of course. And I think that's about it in terms of updates. But as always, I love to hear from you. So do reach out, get in touch, whether it's on the socials. I lurk a lot on Instagram. My handle is Dion with seven underscores. I know it's ridiculous. That's probably the best place to find me or drop me an email. You can find my contact details on my website, which is, can you guess, it's Dion.space. Thank you all so much for listening and thank you so much for all your support with the podcasts. 